All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Ministry Revealed. It is November 24th, 2017, as we could see down here. Today, I am going to share with you guys something incredible that the Lord did for me. I've had it happen now quite regularly uh, where the Lord lets me know that he's using me, that he's uh, he's getting something across to me. And it's just been, it's been so incredible. And today is no exception. This happened to me yesterday. And it's, you know, it really is amazing. It has to do with uh, the Daniel 9 prophecy. And I, I've touched in it in videos before, maybe even in the last video over the past week or so. And, but I, I understand its importance, but I never understood that I needed to really stop and spend some time and show you guys the truth of what I'm saying. And I was talking to uh, a brother in Christ um, that I met through YouTube. You know, when you guys hear the name Mark, that's who I'm talking about. Uh, unless I say otherwise, but how about we just call him Mark? His name is Mark. So I, I was talking to him over this, uh, was it earlier this week? And, you know, some people are, they're just like, uh, dude, I don't know. It's, you know, we are, we already understand it to mean this. And I'm like, I know, but this is, I'm telling you, this is the understanding for the end, like how it's going to apply and what it means. And for a lot of people, I know so far, the only person that's seen it, and my wife even didn't believe me until last night, um, which is what I'm going to share with you guys today, that story and, and the understanding of what this is, the timing of it. I, I've said before, and I'll say again, that I've been given a key that unlocks scripture in relation to how it applies to end times. That's what I've been given. And I can read it from Daniel, from Matthew, from Mark, from Luke, from John, from uh, the timing in Revelation to, I mean, all through all of these different scriptures in Thessalonians and First and Second Peter and Corinthians, all over the place. And I absolutely know it. It's not one particular thing. Like I thought with some people too that have said, well, you definitely, wow, I can't believe, you know, that this has been revealed with Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And that was my starting point. That was where the where the Spirit initially said, look here. And I did, and I was like, what? And then everything started to open from there. But it wasn't just about unlocking Matthew, Mark, and Luke and who's being spoken to. That was that was just the the first turning of the key of the key that I had. Now, I'm able to put that key into other pieces of Scripture and and point to where they relate and how they're speaking in end times and how it relates to the end times. And I know that sounds crazy, but I'm going to show you this even today. And, <laughs> you know, God is, he's so good. It's so incredible. You know, I, <clears throat> I definitely, uh, tears of joy and uh, amazement when when I see what he's doing, <clears throat> when I see it happening in my life, right? So I'm going to sip of coffee here. Ah, nice, fresh, hot coffee. You know, it's it's really amazing. And it's happened now a few times. It happens regularly with Scripture as I bounce stuff off with my wife back and forth, back and forth, and then all of a sudden, boom, it hits. And I'm like, that's what that, this relates here, that relates there. And I start connecting all the dots in that particular of whatever it was we were talking about. And in that case, yes, but I've had times where just, you know, again, since uh, early uh, September, when this has been getting revealed to me on September 8th, moving forward, you know, there was a video I did and I, I shared you guys what happened from it. The video that I called just an impromptu video. I, I was just where the Lord was leading me that day. And I did that video and I literally call it an impromptu video. I've never done like one like that before and I've never done one like that since. And one of my subscribers, I've told you guys about this before. Um, she sends me a comment and told me the story of what happened between her and her mother. And she was trying to explain it that day. Um, this understanding of, 
you know, God and the creation and what really happened through Adam and Eve and, you know, all these different things. And I, for some reason, in the middle of the video, I start explaining that and giving a, a great explanation, just a, an understanding of how to break it down, how to see the understanding of it. And then I go back and I'm doing the other stuff that I was doing in the video. And this subscriber, and I'm sorry, I can't recall her name. I, I'd have to go look it up. But, you know, she was, she said she was in tears. She went to go sit down after having this discussion with her mom. Her mom thought she was crazy. Sits down. My video had just come up. She watches the video and it gets to that point that explains, uh, uh, that gives a, a good breakdown explanation of what her and her mother were, were discussing. And her mom thought she was crazy and she's listening to the devil and all these different things. And because she didn't know how to explain it. And my video... I give a, an explanation of how to understand it and she had just been arguing with her mother about it or her mother didn't believe her and was calling her crazy and you know whatever it was that type of thing and she sits down and she gets comfort and she starts crying when she sees what's being said in the video and I literally call it an impromptu video I don't even know why I was making the video you know that was a powerful powerful wake up call for me I just I was amazed and that would have that would have been like the second event, and my brother Mark, you know, our, my brother in Christ, Mark, uh, he was just, he was saying things before. He said, "Get used to it," and I was like, "Dude, really?" And it just you know, you just don't know when it's when it's happening in your life. It happens once or twice, and you're like, uh, "Okay, you know, that was awesome. I can't believe it." And then you see it. You, you're staying in the Lord, and you're getting stronger, and you're you're doing what He's asking you to do, and it just more and more. And it's just so incredible. And last night was no different. I, I was in tears of joy. My son was there. I had been explaining to him. I told you my son's 14. My daughter's 12. And when I get into the real heavy scripture stuff, like in this detailed understanding, she she's kind of lost with it. She believes and she says, she says, <laughs> my daughter's really cute about it, right? She's, she's like, this is, uh, I don't have... I don't know anybody or any friends or anybody and they go to a Christian school and that, you know, this isn't just, this just isn't normal in my friend's lives. Right. You know, some things she just doesn't want to tell her friends cause she doesn't, she doesn't have the ability to go in and point herself and say, this is where it is. And you know, she doesn't want to always be saying my dad said, my dad said, right. You have to be able to go to the scriptures yourself, which is exactly what I tell you guys to do too. So there I am with my son. I'm in the kitchen. My daughter, my wife's getting stuff ready and, you know, that's the setup of, you know, I start crying and because I, I couldn't believe what the Lord had, had revealed. Well, now, remember, like I said, I was speaking with Mark about this and he was just a little, mm, you know, I'm, I'm just not sure about this. And that's OK. You know, sometimes we, we have to go spend some time in it or it has to be has to be broken down for people to be able to see it and really get that understanding. Well, I was now. Uh, yesterday morning, my wife was off the last couple of days because she had been sick. And yesterday morning, I'm sitting on the couch with my laptop, having my coffee. She's having her coffee. She's on her phone. And I'm going through this stuff. And I'm explaining to her this understanding of this timing here, of these weeks. And I, I'm explaining to her. I said, honey, this is what it means. I said, it means this. You know, here's the seven. Here's the three. Here's the two. And this is what it means. And I will give you guys the detail on that. And I'm saying, this is what it means, honey. And she's like, mm, you know, and, and I'm, I'm using my finger and I'm drawing it on the couch, like one, two, three, and four, five, six, seven. And I'm drawing it just using my finger, you know, marking on the couch. And she's like, uh, honey, you know, pray on it. And I said, well, I'm not going to do a video right away. I said, I know this is it because I had already spoken about this before. I already knew this. But... Since the Lord had revealed to me the timing of revelation, how who's, who's in the seals, when the first wrath comes, which is the wrath of the Lamb, and he shows up and he seals everybody, you know, as soon as I re received that understanding, I had this. I can now point and explain what this means. And so I'm doing that with my wife yesterday morning, and she's telling me, oh, honey, you know, you need to pray on that some more. So... I I keep studying and I'm doing hours and hours yesterday of studying and then I, I bring my laptop and stuff into the garage like I do 
and I'm, I'm watching some videos and I'm doing some stuff and then I come across this video and I'm going to show you a clip of it and I it wasn't really a video I would have normally watched you know some of the things in the title I'm like oh this is you know it's more it I not really clickbait for for believers that are watching but I just for me I'm not saying it was you know I, I believe it was done as a watchman right so but I saw some things in the title and I thought well all right I'll watch it anyways but I had to go pick up my kids so what I did is so I wouldn't lose it and forget it I just forwarded I send an email to myself so that I can remember because if I have it on my phone and I go to while I'm waiting for the kids at the school to come out I might go look on some things on YouTube to see you know just what other things are happening and if I click on something I'm going to end up losing that that uh, that feed that I had so I emailed it to myself I hadn't watched it yet just thought it was interesting and I was going to watch it when I got home well <laughs> I have already spoken to Mark about this earlier in the week or within the past week. I've, I've, I've had my fast, which was ended last Saturday at sundown. It was my first time at three days when the Lord revealed to me the understanding of tribulation, of the seals and the timing, the timing of the seals, the timing of the trumpets and who's blowing the trumpets and where people are. And, you know, it's all these things. And then... Yesterday morning, I'm telling my wife about this, and still nobody is seeing it. And when I explain it, I, I said this to Mark as well. I'm explaining the seven weeks and three score and two weeks, and most people, this is what catches them right here. The three score, because what we've been told that means. And, you know, it, it's I'm going through all this stuff, and then I get in, and I watch this video, which I'm going to show you. And it's, I'm just going to give you like the, a minute. It's just past the four-minute mark, and we'll, it'll last for a few seconds, maybe 30, 45 seconds or something like that. And then I'll pause it and we can talk some more. But I had told Mark in this past week about this three score, and I was also telling my wife yesterday morning that this understanding was right. Like how many times do I tell you guys this? Do I mention this? The understanding for the way it was understood at that time is correct right this whole 69 weeks and the 70th week and all, it, it's correct I'm not saying it's wrong what I'm saying is there's a deeper understanding there's another meaning to what this means just like I've revealed in Matthew Mark and Luke just like I've revealed in first and second Timothy and Corinthians and Chronicles it's the key that I've been given and Always remember this. It is not me that's revealing it. I'm the human voice and eyes that are that are showing this to you guys and breaking it down, but it is the spirit working through me that is revealing this information. And I was saying with this, watch this, right? That it's correct, right? It, it is correct. We understood this as what, 483 years and, you know, and it related to Messiah's first coming. That's true. I tell you guys that all the time. The scriptures did apply for the way they were read. They did mean this. It does, it does apply to what we always thought it applied to. But the key that I've been given with the understanding I've been given opens up another understanding in how it will relate to the end times we are not in them yet we are fast fast approaching and now i say we're not but if uh if revelation 12 if that sign was the beginning which i do believe it was I, I need to correct myself then we we are in the end times but the tribulation portion with the seals hasn't begun this is just our everybody better wake up now wake up we have this opportunity now to be doing what we should be doing to be called accounted worthy to escape. That is not the 144,000. That is a separate group. There is a group that is going to escape that are going to escape all of these things like Luke tells us. I tell you guys, it's, it's, it was what one of the things that opened up everything to me. It's the understanding in Luke, in his discourse, that his group, that he's talking to, he's talking about the whole thing, but he's telling us that his group that he's really addressing is going to be able to escape all of these things. 
All right, please watch some of my other videos if you don't know what I'm talking about. It's Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the discourses. One is to Judah, one is to Israel, the church, and the other in Luke is to the pre-tribulation of all of them, of everybody. It's pre-tribulation. And it's talking to a group that's going to escape. It is not the rapture, all right? It is like a rapture, but it is not a rapture. So let's get now into this. Sorry, a little bit more coffee. Now let's touch base on this. Oh, actually, I want to mention one more thing. There was a, a subscriber, uh, I believe his name's Randy, and he had made a comment yesterday, you know, there's a lot of people that really want to try to understand the timing and because I go through a lot of stuff generally in my videos and I, I don't mean to go into so much, but once I get going and there's just so much being revealed, I kind of get carried away a little in, in going into it all, which is why I tell people to please watch my videos more than once, especially that last video. I mean, that was jam packed with information for most of us, if not all of us, never before heard with understanding, all right? You know, who's heard that Jesus is coming back before the trumpets? Well, he is. All right? We're going to touch on that a little bit today. But the reason I bring this up with Randy is he had asked, you know, why, if I can learn or if there's something I could do to better show, you know, a breakdown of a timeline so that we can get a better understanding. And, you know, I'm open to subject suggestions, but I'm not very good at um, at technology stuff. Um so, you know, I was thinking even with my wife, maybe PowerPoint. My wife says, don't do PowerPoint. The time it takes you to figure it all out and put that stuff and do it together, even if she's helping me because she's better at it, um, you know, you're wasting your time. It take Not wasting your time, but it takes too much time because my wife knows what's happening to me. It's, it's like Raiders of the Lost Ark here in Scripture that happens in our house on a weekly basis. Well, daily, really, but we're something big gets revealed is is pretty much on a weekly basis if not more so than a, than once a week and she she doesn't want me and I get it to to spend time on stuff like that to show people and she mentioned just as Randy did well what about a whiteboard you know Robert Breaker and I've seen another guy actually um about world events and you know he puts points on the board so I was talking to my wife and she suggested it as well and I thought, well, okay. And she says, don't write it as you're doing it. Have everything already there and point to it and be able to explain what you're talking about to be able to break it down and write the scriptures in there. And I thought, okay, you know, that's something. I do have a whiteboard, so um, it's not this big, massive one connected to a wall, but I've got a stand and everything for it. So I'm going to see how that works. And what I can do is give a breakdown and start with the seals and do another one for the trumpets and maybe uh, actually do the, uh, a first one that maybe gives the understanding to break down the 14 years and change that it's going to, everything is going to last, right? Um, and reveal the scriptures, where they are, which again, I, I've done these things, but more where I'm not putting it all in one video and then we you know we don't know where to find this one and that one. So maybe I can make it a three-part video. So thanks, Randy, for that. Uh, I do want to clear it up as much as I can in doing a video, um, or sorry, doing videos in maybe three parts with whiteboard to explain it, have the scriptures on there that you guys can go to, I believe will help as well. So I don't, don't quote me on being able on doing that here right away, but um, I, I am going to look into it and see how it works uh, on the size of board that I have. All right. So with that, I'm going to reveal to you the understanding of Daniel 9.25 and how it applies to the end times. Sorry, a little coffee. Now, watch this. We've always been taught, right, seven weeks and weeks of year, or sorry, uh, which is seven times seven is 49, and then the three score is 60 and two weeks, you know, that all of this has been calculated. And... I've been talking about it for this past week, and like I said, nobody nobody was really believing me, and it's okay because they didn't have the understanding. And this was the key right here. I'm explaining to everybody that three score here and the way it's been taught is partially true. Now, why do I say partially true? Because it does mean three score in how many references of the Bible means 60 
right? <laughs> funny how. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Check that out, hey? I just saw this now. 59 times. <laughs> check that out. 59 times this three score, meaning 60, is referenced in the word. The wor See that? The number 60 in the def definition of three score is referenced 59 times, <laughs> not 60, 59. And the reason I say it's funny is because in this instance, just this one here, it means more than the understanding of three score being 60, meaning 20, 20, and 20. Right, because the score when they say a score, that means six. It means twenty, and there's three of them. That's where we get the understanding of sixty. What I have been saying, in relation to the key of understanding that has been given to me for end time scriptures, this is saying seven years. It's weeks of years, and seven weeks, and then three and a half weeks, three and two score, right, or three. And two weeks, so in the midst of it, three and a half way through the seven years, right? Puts you at the midpoint. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. And after three and a half years in, shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself and the people of the prince, little P, that shall come. Now, there's there's a lot to why people don't understand. One is this 60. And I'll finish on this part with the three score first. I've been saying that this three score, it, it's correct. It was for that understanding. But what the forefathers and what the those who who translated the understanding in scripture, they missed the understanding here. What they should have also had is something along the lines of and can also or also meaning you know, three, to score three of these seven. You know, that type of thing, to score them. So if you had, this, and I was drawing this on my couch, like I said, with my finger, in the morning before getting this revealed, what I'm going to show you here in the video, I would put seven lines on it. And it's like how we mark five, right? When we do five, we go one, two, three, four, and then we put a line through it, like a stroke through it, right? And we scored them, and it makes five. Well, I was putting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines, and then I'd score three of them. One, two, three, like drawing a line diagonally through them, scoring them, marking them off. And then the other two weeks there as a half of one, right? So as I'm, I'm explaining that, my wife's like, you know, you're going to need to pray on that, and so are others. I mean, and others have said that. And what I was saying here is that this was correct, but it should also say, and also could refer to as, you know, a, a scoring, you know, taking some off from something else in that sense. Or meaning, you know, uh, uh, whatever. You know what I mean? You, you'll see what I'm getting at. <clears throat> that there was should have been more understood here. But for the timing... They they just didn't they just didn't understand it back then because it meant what it meant. We already knew what this meant, right? When they're explaining the, the word in Hebrew. They already understood that it meant 60. So what I've been saying, when I'm when I'm telling this to my wife and I'm talking to Mark, and I'm saying there should have been another breakdown of explanation of, of explanation of what this three score here can mean. And obviously, just like my wife, like, uh, and you gotta remember, guys, me too. You know, I'm speaking those words, but I'm also thinking like my wife, uh, really? So all the forefathers, all, all the, 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 the fathers, the church fathers, not the forefathers, the church fathers, and all these people that have written the scriptures and, you know, translated and had the Hebrew word and meaning, you mean they got it wrong and you've got it right over all these hundreds of years? And I said, no, no, they didn't get it wrong. They just missed the rest of it because they didn't have the understanding yet. She's like, so yeah, so they didn't get it all right, and you've got it. And as crazy as it sounds, I'm saying yes. But I'm Alan Dubray here in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and 
a family man, you know, runs a small business, a, a regular guy. How do I, and believe me, my wife, we always say the same thing. How do, why is it that I get this information? My wife does know better, but if she doesn't get it, she's going to say, well, I don't know there, honey. And it makes sense. She should, right? Question it. Don't just take it at face value. Well, check this out. Here I am explaining this and everybody's like, no, no, no. It means seven weeks and 60 and two weeks. And this is the understanding we've always had. Well, I remember now, I'm get, I come back home from picking up the kids, and I'm going to watch this video now. And I start watching this video, see all these things, you know, the Daniel 70 years since, and, you know, 47. And so, you know, a lot of things that will catch people's attention, which is why he's, you know, look at the number of subscribers and how many views he's got, right? And it hasn't been up for that long. So... Kudos to this guy bringing awareness, okay? Now, I'm watching this video. And right here, it's about to begin. And my jaw hit the floor, okay? We'll listen to it. And then I'm going to come back and explain and tell you what happened, okay? Let's have a listen. Let's go back for a moment at Daniel 9, verse 25, regarding the prophecy of the first coming of the Lord. Isaac Newton devoted a large part of his life to studying the book of Daniel. In his pursuit of desiring to understand the book of Daniel, the Spirit of the Lord unveiled to him the complete meaning of this prophecy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks and threescore and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. From Daniel 9.25, scholars usually add the seven weeks of years, or 49 years, and 62 weeks, 434 years, to get 483 years and calculate the time of Messiah's first coming. However, Newton says there is no linguistic basis for adding those two numbers, 49 and 434 and to do so is doing violence to the language of Daniel. Newton says the two numbers separately speak of both the first and second coming. All right, so you heard all of that. Here I am, Al, Alan Dubray, regular Joe family guy, telling my family and others that there's a different understanding here. There's something else that... I'm not crazy. I'm telling you this what this is what it means. And nobody's believing it because there's not it's just Alan saying this, right? Two things have been revealed already. One, which is what? When Jesus is returning for the church and he's going to seal the 144,000, when you know that, this now makes more sense. So, what was Sir Isaac Newton? <laughs> right so of course my family my son and my excuse me and my wife in particular my wife is like what i show them this video of course and i say Do you, so here i am trying to explain and i i'd heard a few years back that isaac newton you know was a was a big christian and did a lot of studying in scripture but i didn't know it was about daniel where he spent most of his time i had no idea and now check this out here I am trying to explain that over all these years and the church fathers and what they did by saying that it only means this, are they were missing a point that in the future it's also going to pertain and mean something else. Or it's not going to mean 60. It's going to mean like three years and a half going into it. And it's going to be based off of the seven years to make seven years, and in the middle of the seven years, three and a half years in, right? So here I am trying to explain this, and nobody's going to believe little Al Dubray here, sitting here on his laptop with this key that he claims to have. And I watched this video, and Mr. Isaac Newton, who we all know who was a genius, I'm not the genius, no, don't get me wrong, it's not what I'm saying, who's a genius, 
who said the church fathers, everybody got tied up with adding it and adding it and adding it, that it didn't do justice to what Daniel was speaking about and that they could also have another meaning separately. Do you see what I'm saying? The Lord revealed to, to Isaac Newton another understanding 300 years ago before what's been revealed to me. And now I am here telling you that what has been revealed to me was like Isaac Newton. Isaac Newton was saying they, they're not doing it justice by only claiming it should all be added together. Isaac Newton says it should be separated, that this means this and that there's this with this. Now, here I am 300 years later telling you that now this is how it's going to apply in the end times. It means seven years and three and a half years in, the street and the wall will be built even in troublous times. And after those three and a half years, Yeshua, Messiah, is going to be cut off. But not for the prince, but not for himself. And the people of the prince, Satan, that shall come, shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood. I've told you about this already, guys. This is ten, ten and a half years. This is um, uh, Psalm 90 and verse 10. If it be 70 years, to, uh, seven, a generation is 70 years, and if it be 80, it will be tribulation. And who are they building, rebuilding Jerusalem to? Messiah the Prince. There's going to be a commandment that goes forth to rebuild and restore Jerusalem unto Messiah the Prince. And people say, well, okay, well, when? When are they going to understand or see that Jesus is coming and there's going to be a decree, a commandment to restore and to rebuild Jerusalem? And why would they have to rebuild it? Isn't it already there now? But it says they're going to rebuild it, restore and rebuild it unto Messiah the Prince. Seven weeks. So they're going to restore and rebuild it. It's going to be a commandment. It's going to be seven weeks, seven years. Okay? It's seven years. But in the middle, Halfway through, the street and uh, the street shall be built again, and the wall, even in the troublous times of those three and a half years. Excuse me. And after those three and a half years, Messiah is going to be cut off, so he's going to go somewhere, right? But not for himself. It's because the people of the prince that are coming, who are now going to come against it. Right, the people of the prince, Satan's people, they're going to come and they're going to destroy the city again and the sanctuary. And then what? The end thereof shall be with a flood. This is Revelation 12. This is Psalm 30. Right, they're going to, the end of it shall be with a flood where they're going to chase them out. Right? So now they're going to build it to Messiah the prince. What on earth are you talking about, Alan? Well, they're literally going to build it to Jesus. Watch this. I showed you guys this in a previous video, right? We have the seals. And again, this will be something that I'll break down for you guys more in another video when I do uh, the, the whiteboard thing, okay? But I've already revealed that the seals are the beginnings of sorrows. They are, they are what Matthew and Mark talk about, sorrows. What Luke says, these are all going to be the beginning for you guys. Then what? Then they're going to bring you up to get beheaded. And look at this. When we now say, well, why would they be restoring? And I've explained that the seals are the first seven years. Right? The first seal is going to be the escape group going. The victory. Victory and victorious. That's the conquering and conquer. There's no, there's no arrow with that bow. There's a crown, a Stephanos crown. Okay? That all of these things, you know, the, fi the fifth seal is what? The fifth seal isn't an event. It's people that are seen under the altar in heaven, those that have been beheaded, killed for their testimony. People from the church of Smyrna, I've explained, okay? And then what do we have? Then we have what? Then we have the stars falling from heaven. 
This is the Revelation 12, 4, right? Of her untimely figs, her untimely figs. And then what does everybody say? At the end of the sixth seal, they're saying, hide us. Mountains fall on us. Hide us from him that sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come. Well, what does that mean? We're at the end of the, we're at the sixth seal. At the end of the sixth seal, the seventh seal hasn't happened yet. So then who's here? Uh, the Lamb is here. The Lamb is showing up. They're freaking out and saying, hide us from his face. His wrath is coming. What, do, what does the church know that they're not going to be a part of? The church knows that they're not going to be here for wrath. But for those who aren't found worthy to escape, they're going to be here during the rest of the tribulation. So now what happens is we have the angel, which I believe is Jesus ascending. He was brought forth, right? The Holy Spirit might be the she in Revelation 12. I still need to do a study on that. And she brings forth, right? So she brought Jesus back. And here he is ascending from the east with the seal of the living God. And him and these four angels that John saw that are standing on the four corners of the earth are going to seal the 144,000 here on the earth. And where do they come from? They come from men upon the earth from the seven churches. Well, really, they're from one church. They're from the church of Sardis. But they have to be sealed because what? They have to be sealed now before what? Before the church can now be raptured. This is the rapture of the church here. So the 144,000 get sealed, who are from the church of Sardis. And then those who repented, those churches, boom. Here they are, now raptured. They're gone. This is the rapture. The dead in Christ first, followed by those who are alive and remain. And then what do we have? Then we go into Revelation 8, and it says what? The seventh seal is, again, it's not this big event on earth. It's what? Silence in heaven for about the space of half an hour. I call it like a memorial. This is like the like a funeral memorial. This is where they're they're just quiet and it's like a moment of silence, if you will. All right? And then what do we see? The seven angels now stood before God and they were given the seven trumpets. Well, what seven angels? The seven angels to the seven churches. See that? So now Jesus is here, right? So if Jesus is here. We saw that they saw him after the sixth seal. They're saying, hide us from his wrath. Hide us from his face, from the throne, from, from his wrath that is coming. Mountains fall on us, right? Well, what has happened earlier? Well, let's go back into the fourth seal. Remember, we talked about this. You guys have probably read this before. A fourth part of the earth to kill. Almost two billion people in approximately seven years or less, are going to be killed. So when we go back into Daniel, and we see in Daniel, as I was explaining in, in Daniel 9 and 25, why are they having to restore, right? Going forth from the command to restore and to build Jerusalem, why are they having to restore and build it again? Two billion people on earth within a seven-year or less time frame have been killed. There's been war and destruction all over the place, right? Think the Ezekiel 38, 39 war. These wars, and again, so I'm giving you guys a time frame, but there are so many things that are going to happen within those, those seals in the first part of tribulation. There's so many events and things that are going to take place during the trumpets, right? During those trumpets in that time frame of about seven years as well. There's so much that's going to happen within it. I'm giving you the, the breakdown with the understanding of how long this is, where it's situated, who's going to be there, right? And now here we go. I just showed you that Jesus returns after the sixth seal, before the trumpets, seals the 144,000. The rapture of the church takes place. So the rapture of the church, you notice that, right? It takes place what? After they've seen the 144, they see like the 144,000 get sealed before the rapture. And what else? Well, the sixth seal has happened, right? The meteor shower the, it, that's going to destroy a whole bunch of stuff too, right? The, the stars falling, the sixth seal. 
And they're saying what? They're saying hide us from his face, from his wrath that's coming. And the 144,000 are sealed. And then the rapture happens. Watch this. Watch this. What does Mark 9 say? Now, this type of, of discussion is in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And of course, like I've shown you in all three times, it's spoken of slightly differently. Well, watch Mark's group. Mark's group, when he's speaking, it, it, it's to the church. It's to Israel during the tribulation of the seals. And what does he say? Verily I say unto you, that there shall be some of you that stand here which shall not taste of death. The alive in Christ, hello? Till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. Seen. They will have seen it. Not they're seeing it come and boom, they're gone. No, they will have seen it already come. It's a past tense. They've seen it come. All right? Which is just like I was saying in Revelation. They've seen it coming. Right? In Revelation 6, they could see it. The, the, the sixth seal has happened. Now they're saying, hide us from the face of him that sits on the throne and from his wrath. They've seen it coming. Which means the church and those who are alive and remain, they will have seen it coming. They'll, see, they'll have seen him coming with his power and glory. Then the 144,000 get sealed. And then they get raptured. You see that? They will have seen it. Then there's the moment of silence. Where? In heaven. That's the seventh seal. It's break time. It's, we need to chill out. There is massive devastation and destruction. Jesus now came onto the earth. So now, Jesus was seen. Is he seen and believed and understood by everybody? No, definitely not. We know that, right? Otherwise, it would be all over. But now, let's go back into Daniel. Daniel. From the command to restore and to rebuild Jerusalem, right? To restore and build Jerusalem. Well, why? Because of all the destruction that's been happening during the seals. Could you imagine less than seven years, two billion people approximately dying or being killed? And plus there's the group that escaped already too, that was taken out of the way. Millions of people there as well gone. That people can't understand what has happened because it wasn't a rapture. Their bodies will have dropped dead. Their spirits were taken to heaven. See that? That's going to confuse a lot of people. That's why this is my missionary. I'm my, my mission. This is my ministry to wake people up to what's going to happen so that when it does happen, there'll be proof, there'll be evidence here to say, here it is. This is what happened so that when it does happen, they'll know. And there won't be this confusion. The Lord is going to use these videos, this information, and get it out to people. Okay? So, from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem, unto who? Jesus Christ, Messiah, the capital P, Prince. So when he returns, they're going to realize, oh my goodness, what has happened? Jesus is there. They're going to restore and rebuild Jerusalem, and it's going to be a seven-year deal. And three and a half years into it, it's going to get rebuilt. The wall and the street, it's going to get rebuilt during those troublous times of three and a half years out of the first out of the seven and where does this put us watch this where does this put us well jesus returns i showed you right we know that he returns after the the or before the trumpets right after the sixth seal then we have the seventh seal which is just silence in heaven and now the seven angels which are the seven angels of the seven churches now have the trumpets. Don't you find that interesting? I just thought of this. I, sh I talked about this before, but who has the seals? Who's loosening the seals? The lamb is, isn't he? The lamb was the one found worthy to loose the seals. The lamb is loosening all these seals. When we get to the trumpets, who's, who's blowing the trumpets? Why not the lamb? It's his wrath. Why not the lamb? Why are the angels? Because they've switched places. The lamb is on the earth. And the seven angels to the seven churches have been raptured. They're now in heaven. They're going to blow the trumpets. Well, how do, well let's go find more evidence. How do we know the lamb is here on earth? 
after the seals, but before the trumpets. I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with them 144,000, having the Father's name written in their foreheads. Right? And what does it say about them? These are they, the 144,000. These are the ones which follow the lamb wherever he goes. So where's the lamb? The lamb's here. He's on earth. He's on Mount Zion. They follow him wherever he goes. I showed you they're from Sardis. What does Sardis say about them? Sardis, you have a few within you that have not defiled themselves with, right? That have not defiled, uh, they have, sorry. Thou have a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments. And by the way, this is another whole video, have not defiled their garments. If you uh, do a word search and study on garments, <laughs> it's not exactly what you think it is, my friends. It's, it's so much more so exciting. Um, but what does it say? And they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Well, where are they walking with them? <laughs> They're walking with them on the earth. Right? This is them. So you can see, let's go in and break that down more. Go back into Daniel. I just showed you. There he is on earth. Daniel says there's going to be a decree to restore and to rebuild it unto him. It'll be seven years. And when does that happen? It happens at trumpets, before the trumpets begin. And then during the first four trumpets, that's the three and a half years that even in troublous times, right? It'll be three, three and a half, somewhere in there. Even in troublous times, the wall and the streets are going to be built again. And then after the four trumpets, the first four trumpets, which is during the time that this is getting built, after the fourth trumpet, Messiah is going to be cut off. Why? Because Satan now arrives. Satan will have lost the battle in heaven, and now Satan gets here. Satan has now arrived, and he's ticked, and what's going to happen? Jesus is left. The 144,000 are out and about doing their thing, and the others in Israel that were there with Jesus, that were worshiping and so forth, they're now going to what? They're going to fly away into the wilderness. Right? Just like I said, I, uh, Psalm 90 and 10. They're going to fly away into the wilderness, right? The end thereof shall be with a flood. Well, where do we see that? The end thereof shall be with a flood. When? This is from the midway point of the last seven and a half years. So from the beginning of trumpets to the midway point after the fourth trumpet, then who gets here? Satan arrives. Jesus takes off. Jesus is out of here. He can't, he's not going to be here with Satan at the same time. And uh, this is after the fourth trumpet. So, well, how do we know? When does Satan get here? Well, let's see when Satan gets here. Ready? Satan gets here. Here, watch this. There, here's the trumpets. Boom. Here are the seven trumpets. First, first trumpet, mountain, right? Stars falling again. This, is, this destruction is going to be crazier than the seals, right? This is to the fourth one. What happens after the fourth trumpet? This angel comes flying through the midst of heaven saying, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the last trumpets, the last three angels which are going to sound. Why? Because Satan is now here. Satan is going to be here. Satan is the one right here. He's going to be the angel that is given the key to the bottomless pit. He's going to go unlock his pit. And he's going to be what? He's going to be the king that's over them. The pit's going to open all these locusts, the demons and everything are going to come flying out at the fifth seal. Uh, sorry, at the fifth trumpet. And they had a king over them who is the angel of the bottomless pit. Right? Who is the angel? Who is this angel? He's the angel of the bottomless pit. Okay. Who is he? Satan. See that? So now Satan has been cast down into the earth, right? Well, where else do we find this information? Revelation 12, right? They fight Michael and his angels against Satan and his angels. They fight and Satan loses. He is cast down. Everybody's rejoicing in heaven, praising, right? Everybody that's overcome the lamb. 
And then what? Uh, and then, where is it? Uh, when he finds out, therefore rejoice, ye heavens, for Satan is down. But woe to the inhabitants of the earth, right? And when the dragon, Satan, saw that he was cast, what? Unto the earth, he persecuted the woman, which brought forth the man-child. And the woman were given wings of great eagles that she might fly into the wilderness. And then what? Where she might be there nourished for a time, time, and half a time. Till the end of the 14 years. Right? That's when Jesus Messiah is cut off and they flee into the wilderness. Well, what ha when they flee, what happens? Well, Satan casts out of his mouth water as a flood to try to make them get taken away in the flood. But the earth opens up. Well, see, they get taken away in the flood. This is, again, Revelation, uh, sorry, uh, Psalm 90 and 10. It's what same thing that Daniel was talking about. And unto the end, wars are determined. Right? Here we go. Last seven years, trumpets. In the midst of the trumpets, after the fourth trumpet, Jesus is cut off, and they're going to what? They're going to flee from the prince, the people of the prince that are coming to destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood. See that? It's all there, guys. Nothing I have shown you has a glitch, uh, uh, anything. Jesus is returning after the sixth seal. The church, the, the 144,000 are going to get sealed from among the church groups. They are one of the churches. They are Sardis. I've just shown you they're Sardis. Right? And then we know that the 144,000 get sealed and we're told who they come from. They were redeemed from the earth and they were redeemed from among men because they were sealed on the earth by the Lamb, by Jesus, and those four angels. They were sealed from among the churches, but they were one of the churches. They were among one of those churches. And then, boom, after they're sealed, they're there with the Lamb. They go to Mount Zion with the Lamb. I believe it'll be like Philip with the eunuch and go from the water and boom, there he is in another city suddenly. They will all meet with the Lamb on Mount Zion. They will be raptured to that spot in a moment, just like what happened to Philip. He didn't leave the earth. He got raptured to, uh, to that other city he was from where he had, uh, after he had baptized the eunuch. I believe that's what's going to happen with these 144,000. They're going to be raptured to Mount Zion with the Lamb. That's what we're going to see. And they'll probably, then they'll be sent out all over the world as well. Right? They're going to have power. So we know this. And then you have the rapture. Before the trumpets, right? I believe it'll be even uh, right before the seventh seal or at the seventh seal. That is the rapture of the church. And that's why the understanding of this is so important. Because the church is going to be here during executions. During, during, I mean, we, I just showed you. There, you people are going to be dying from famines, from wars, people giving each other up and killing each other. There's going to be all sorts of craziness. And you're going to have to understand, which I'm going to do videos on this. First Corinthians speaks to the church during tribulation. First Thessalonians speaks to the church during tribulation. First Timothy as well, and first Peter as well. These are instructions hidden in here as to how you're going to need to live. Right? First Timothy talks a lot about that. What not to eat. How you should only be eating certain things. There's reasons. There's reasons why you're, you're not going to be, why you're not going to be allowed to eat meat unless it's blessed meat. You know, even if you say a prayer over it and bless it. Because you have no idea what's coming. Maybe some of you do, and I don't mean this as a general nobody knows. But for the most part, people have no idea the insanity of what's coming. The absolute insanity of what's coming, and I don't say this to scare you, but the absolute insanity of what's coming. These are going to be need. These are needing. These are going to be need to us. Uh, sorry, tongue twister. This is going to be need. To, this is going to need to be understood. <laughs> there we go. I got it out. It's. <laughs> it is going to be so important. This understanding. All right.
So going back to Daniel as I finish up here, it was it was to realize that here I am, Alan Dubray, trying to explain to everybody that this is the understanding based on the key that I've been given, that this is speaking that they're going to rebuild Jerusalem, restore and build it to Jesus Christ during the last seven years, during the first four trumpets. And after the first four trumpets, it's going to be built. But then after the trumpets, Jesus is going to be cut off. And the people of the prince are going to come. Satan's going to be here and the, his people are coming. And they're going to destroy the city and the sanctuary. And I'm telling you that this is what it means. And nobody wanted to believe because, and I get it, because we had this old understanding, which was applicable understanding to that, to that time, to what was being said. It's true. All scriptures are like that. But the understanding of what was given me, which nobody would believe, because it was just Alan saying it. I watch a video, and I get Isaac Newton telling people that what they were saying there in the scriptures and how all of the, the church fathers and everybody was explaining that all these numbers and this needed to be added together like that wasn't doing justice to what Daniel was talking about. Do you understand how crazy that was for me yesterday? How my jaw fell to the floor in just absolute awe that the Lord was telling me, Alan, I, here is Mr. Newton. If they won't believe you, I'm going to give you a reference. I'm going to give you what Isaac Newton said, who everybody knows and believes he was a, a brilliant man and was a brilliant man. I'm going to give you the information that he discovered, that he broke down, that I revealed to him to help others see what I'm giving to you. That the scriptures are not only meant to be understood in that way. There is an end time revelation that I have given you to understand these scriptures. And Isaac Newton was also given that understanding for his time. Do you guys, guys, do you understand that? Isaac Newton wasn't given the understanding I was given. Isaac Newton, it was 300 years ago. The time wasn't yet. The time is now coming. I was telling my wife this last night. Do you understand the, the depth of the, the meaning of this too? Why is it being given now? Because we are in those times. This, we, we are in the final countdown. There's not decades left or years left. We are in the countdown to the tribulation, revelation one, uh, the, the seals beginning, which will be the escape first, and then war will begin. And he gives me he gives me Isaac Newton. He reveals to me through Isaac Newton that he revealed a similar thing to Isaac Newton and then gives me a video. The morning, the, the afternoon of the morning, I was going through it with my wife, which I'd never, I'd, I'd never talked about my, that with my wife before, ever, in our entire life. And here I am, and in the afternoon, he tells me, hey, here you go. Boom. I told Isaac Newton the same thing. Now maybe people will believe you because it's not just you showing them. Isaac Newton was saying the same thing, that the understanding of those numbers were not meant just to be all calculated together. There were other understandings to them. One I've also given to Isaac and the other one, Alan, I have given to you. This is going to be what's coming. This is going to be what needs to be understood by those who are here at that time. The church will have seen him coming in power. Then they'll go. You see that? It's incredible. And it's going to give, when the church is going through this, they're going to, once they, they realize what's going on, once they this, somehow the Lord gets this out there, people are going to realize how much time they have left how they can endure. It's going to give them hope because they know the blessing that comes for those who make it through. They know that there's going to be a group that makes it through. They know it's going to be approximately seven years to when the church gets to go. That, that's not the end of everything. That's to the rapture. You see what I'm saying? 
This is so incredible. And you know, when I saw this video, I was I was in tears. And then I, I went inside and I'm talking to my wife about it and I'm explaining it and I'm in such awe. I bring my son down and I'm explaining to him and I, and I start crying. But I'm crying tears of joy because I cannot believe that the Lord is using me for this. And I just give him such glory and praise because I'm just, I'm, I'm dumbfounded. We, you know, in my household, <laughs> we just say, uh, you know, my wife and I, anyways, we say, why me? I, I, I don't know. Because I obeyed? Because I'm obeying? Because I keep going through and, and he's, I'm, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing? I've never physically or, or, or heard him vocalize words to me. I've never had visions right in front of me or anything like that. I did have a dream where I said, you know, when I wanted something to be revealed because I was I was demanding. It was the first time I ever demanded a prayer like that in a prayer. And the timing of when he showed this to me, it, it was perfect because he couldn't have shown it to me when I requested it because it wouldn't have made sense and it didn't apply. And shows it to me the next day after the deadline I had given him. I mean, it was amazing. So, you know, <laughs> the Lord is working, guys. I, I don't believe it's only me, obviously. I believe he's revealing this maybe with other people in different languages around the world. Now, I, I don't know, but he, he absolutely is, and I'm here to share it with you guys. Um, you know, I dedicate this all to him. This is him. I am just a voice here on the computer walking you guys through this the way I've been led, the way it's been revealed to me. And I pray that it reaches you guys. I pray that you guys share it. Send it to other people. Get other people to subscribe to and to watch these videos. You know, and I will do my best to to explain it better with so much that has been covered in my videos that uh, I'll go in and I'll, I'll do my best to, to break them down and, and to not cover so much in, in one video. But guys, I just wanted to share. Here is my proof. Here in Isaac Newton's research in 300 years ago in his writings that backed exactly what I was saying, that that understanding was not meant to be the only understanding. There is a deeper meaning. The Lord gave it to Isaac for his time, and he has given it to Alan for this end time that's coming so that he could share it with others. All right, guys? So I hope that helps with the understanding when Jesus is returning and the seals and the timing of that, when they get the 144,000 sealed, when the rapture happens, and then it goes into trumpets. And, you know, I've covered quite a bit too, but hopefully it was uh, a little bit slower, easier to piece together there as well. Please just watch it again. You know, rewind maybe just parts of it um, if if you need to. But guys, it was so incredible. I, I love you. I, I love what the Lord is doing through me. And I'll, I'll be happy to do it till the time comes to go. All right. So God bless you guys. I love you. Uh, I want to say thank God. Thank you, Father God, for for all that you've done, not only for me, but for all of us in opening our eyes and our ears, you know, removing the scales from our eyes, softening our hearts that we could receive you and see you in, through your spirit and receive your son, Jesus Christ, that we may come to you. Oh, thank you, Father God. This is so incredible. You are so incredible. You are so good. We love you and we thank you. And in Jesus' name, amen. All right. Thanks, guys. God bless. Talk soon.